Hello and welcome back and today we've returned to the subject of multimedia streaming. Now a number of you may be utilising an Amazon Fire TV or Fire Stick to enjoy the multimedia on your NAS. It's probably one of the most popular streaming devices out there in the market to date. But if you are using a Synology NAS, a number of users reach the point where they have to make a choice whether they want to use Plex Media Server on their NAS and use the Plex app for Fire TV or use Synology's video station application and use DS Video for Fire TV. And that's what today's video is about. We're going to be comparing both of these things, both of these apps, which is going to return to my desktop for a moment. On the left-hand side of the screen, we've got Video Station running on a Synology DS920 Plus. And on the very same Synology now, as you can see from the IPs, we're also running Plex. Now, before we go any further, a few things I should highlight straight off the bat. Sorry for my phone there in the background. Number one, uh, on Video Station, we have enabled uh, the use of uh, video plugins there to access the movie database to scrape some of that metadata. But just bear in mind to do so, you will need to arrange an API key. It, it's completely free, but you will have to get an API key from the movie database there. Uh, on top of that, when it comes to the Plex server, for Plex, I am using a Plex Pass account, something that will become clear later on. But the reason I'm showing this here on screen right now is just to give you a decent sense of perspective when we leave this Synology as here and now make our way back into the Amazon Fire TV. And that's what we're going to be utilizing for the rest of this video. So probably most of you are more familiar with Plex, so I think it's only best we start with DS Video first. Um, Throughout the course of this video, we're going to be looking at a few main areas. The multimedia that it supports, we're going to be looking at the graphical user interface, that's ultimately what you are controlling, playback of individual files, what customization and configuration you can do, everything from transcoding uh, to different formats and multi uh, and audio formats, and finally some of the configuration and options that are built into the individual apps. But the first thing I'm going to highlight is probably a bit of a downer for some users. Some of you may have spotted DS Photo there. Unfortunately, DS Photo on uh, Amazon Fire TV, from all of the research I could see, and indeed all of my own testing, trying to log into this NAS would constantly hit a wall. I would just constantly log in. I would go in, and we've created a Billy Basic password, as you can see there. And I tried different variations just in case it wasn't the admin, and I tried using the sub admin account, and it was just no good in dsm7 with synology photos you can't access your photo library unless you are using um, apple tv or uh, google tv their own android tv you can sideload uh, a few android apps onto uh, amazon fire tv but the ds photos application does not match fully with synology's photo app which is such a shame because when you go in to DS Photos, as you can see here, we can access the multimedia. This is the media that we normally use for all of our Plex Media Server testing. And we can access the TV shows. We can access the movies. We can access the 1080p and 4K trailers that we always use. We can access all of it. However, you can't access your photos in this app. You can't access your music, which is quite a contrast when we make our way into Plex Media Server which is kind of making itself the jack of all trades. When you log in to the device and synchronize it and connect it all up like you normally would, you've got access to TV shows, sure, but you've also got access to your music. You've also got access to your photos that you're crawling with the app. So it's worth remembering that Plex Media Server is giving you support of multiple different multimedia types, whereas DS Video is only servicing video, which may be a problem. Again, if you're using Apple TV, if you're using um, Android TV, you can access Synology Photos on those platforms, but currently on Amazon Fire TV, it is not an option. Next up, let's talk about the graphical user interface of both of these applications, because once again, they've gone very different ways. You may have seen it when I scrolled through there. When you do load up DS Video for the first time, you have to log in and find your NAS on the network or enter uh, the remote IP. You can connect to it via Quick Connect there. But just have a little look at the configuration and options. This is pretty much what everyone sees. This is kind of a standard as well, just to put that into perspective. And we will have a video coming up soon comparing against uh, both MB and the QNAP application. But this style of GUI 
is heavily borrowed and it's quite well established at this point so for example if we look at this QNAP here as you can see big blue bar on the right hand side of the screen it's all fairly established at this point but once we move on to Plex Media Server we can see the GraphQL user interface is arguably better now the text is smaller so if you do have kind of you know difficulty seeing things and i don't know if you're watching this video um on for the comfort of your sofa or a laptop or tv but the text is certainly larger on the synology app now when it comes to things like subtitles there is full customization on both of these applications um but I would say comparing the two in the way information is displayed, particularly once both of them have gone ahead and scraped metadata found online, uh, Plex Media Server, uh, sorry, uh, Plex, the client application for Fire TV, is just a better GUI. It's a little bit more techy, so I know there's going to be users that don't really like this kind of flicky back and forth, particularly when you're using a remote control from the comfort of your sofa. But once you realize just how much configuration and options the Plex app gives you, and then you return to the DF Video app, it does come across as just a little basic. Again, that might be what you're after, but I think there's no avoiding that between the two of them, the stylistic choices that have gone into the way the information is being portrayed to you is arguably prettier and better and more functional on the Plex app overall. The same goes when you dig in and you look at the way your multimedia is shown to you. So for example, if we look at the matrix here, we can see that it's showing us information about the cast here on the Synology app. We can get a little bit more uh, about the individual people there at the bottom, the actors. Again, if you've got multiple things built in together. So if you've got uh, all of the movies that from the Wazowskis, it, if you click on these names, it will list all of those together on there. If we make our way out in the video settings, things are a little light, I'm going to be honest with you. You can see the name of the file and you can play the file. That's really it. If you want to add to an existing playlist, you can do that. You can mark it as watched. But that's really it. That's all the information you get. Whereas when we make our way into Plex Media Server, sorry, uh, Plex, I'll stop saying Media Server, it's force of habit. When we go into Plex, the client application on Fire TV, and we select that exact same file there, we make our way in and we select uh, the matrix there. What we see, we see a lot more of the cast. Arguably, the actual initial what you see on screen for the movie, I would say, is probably a little better, I would say, between the two of them, at least at the cursory glance on the Synology. But genuinely, for me personally, looking at these, Afterwards, it's all in favor of Plex. If we go to the more options there, we've got the playback settings that we can sort of select there. Again, not a huge number of options to play with, but you can do the watch together function. So you've got other users that might be watching remotely, something that's not uh, supported at the very least on the uh, Amazon Fire TV version. And you can find out a little bit standard more information. So not loads more, but there's just little things like that that you can go ahead. Now, let's go ahead and go into immediate playback. So we're just going to play this file. Uh, this may be the reason we can't monetize this video, but okay, why not? So we're going straight into the movie there. You may see a drop in frame rate while I'm doing this. Again, I've tapped the middle button. That's why that option appeared there. But tapping the middle button brings us uh, the options underneath. And what we can do is see what options are open to us. So... Straight away, we've got the option of doing subtitles. So if we click subtitles, if we had a subtitle file, we could access them there. Next up, we can choose the picture quality we want to utilize there. And again, we can show and select a multitude of different formats if we wish to flick between or have it automatically convert to a supported version. Again, pausing nice and responsive. The same goes if we go to the options on the right there, we've got the same options, those playback settings and more that we had earlier on. But I like the fact that we can do a little bit more configuration and change there on the different formats to play. Now, we've got you know, shuffle, we've got repeat, we've got fairly standard stuff, we've got the option as well to change the format as well of the visual, uh, the kind of layout there of the movie we're watching. So if we come out of that and make our way into the Synology application there and see how they tackle playback, let's go in and have a little look. So again, we've got all those options we saw before. So if we click play, we've got that big bulky box there that will disappear after a little while there. So again, similar playback there. Again, I apologize for the drop in frame rate, perhaps. Uh, we've got an option there for closed captions, otherwise subtitles. And on the right hand side, we've got a lot, and I mean a lot, of configuration options there in terms of subtitle placement and more. But considering the lack of a lot of configuration options up to this point, 
I'm surprised they've gone so deep and heavy there just on the subject of subtitles. Now, if we go into the closed caption, if we've got um, uh, different audio file formats there we can flick between, we had that option on Plex as well. And that's really it. We can, you know, cycle forward. We can choose if we wish fast forward through the movie and carry on. But there isn't really anything else. There's certainly no option to change the file and transcode uh, by our own choice. Something I'm going to touch on in a moment in terms of transcoding. But nonetheless, the controls, again, just seem that little bit better there on Plex Media Server if you're going to enjoy multimedia on your NAS on an Amazon Fire TV. And now on to the subject of transcoding or converting or encoding or conversions. Ultimately, what this means is, is the multimedia that you're watching on your NAS, sometimes if someone's accessing your multimedia remotely and maybe the server doesn't have sufficiently enough upload for all of the connected users to download, or you're accessing multimedia on a client device with a limited data connection, transcoding may be of huge benefit to you. It means that the file will be reshaped, re, you know, repacked, and ultimately, in some cases, a better suited fit to the client device you're watching it on. Now, one of the native benefits that everyone talks about when it comes to enjoying multimedia on your NAS uh, in terms of transcoding is that when you're transcoding uh, using Synology's uh, DS video application on a Synology NAS, you have transcoding as standard. You don't need to pay anything extra. You don't need a subscription, which you do need to do. If you want to take advantage of hardware transcoding in Plex, you need a Plex Pass which can cost you anywhere up to 100 nicker a year, give or take. But we've still got the native access to it in DS Video, included with the cost of your NAS. So you can change the quality of the playback you want by default. You can change, if you wish, lower it down, have it so it always plays in that format to start with. And it will convert automatically in the background when you're accessing your multimedia remotely in DS Video. So it will transcode there, but there didn't seem to be many options or indeed any at all in the native playback player when we were using DS Video there. Now, we could use a third party player. So if we have third party players built in like MX Player, VLC, there is option to configure with those, but still we're talking and reviewing here DS Video. We're not reviewing VLC, we're not reviewing MX. We've got those options of pass through, something that's been added in more recent updates for Plex, for MB, for Jellyfin, and of course for DS Video, and although these options are here and that native transcoding is good, I wish I had more means to use it on the fly. Because I don't always want to go into the conversion settings and then when I'm in them, go ahead, make my way back, say that everything I watch from this point I want low quality manually. Yes, it will trigger it automatically sometimes, but not always. And it will have to assess it on a case-by-case -case basis. I just wish I could go in watch the movie like I did there with the Matrix, click play, and then let's carry on where we left off. I wish there was an option in here that would let me configure those options. Now, let's put that into contrast with Plex. <clears throat> and once again, this is going to be another reason why Plex and its configuration options are just genuinely A1. So, once we go in, the first thing we can do is we like, we can go down if we have multiple servers, click more, and we can access all of our multiple servers that are accessible. But if we go into the settings menu then, this is for the client app you're using and how it interacts with your server, you've got a lot going on. Notwithstanding Plex having a lot of extras, um, particularly if you're a Plex Pass user to kind of enhance your experience. But on top of that, if you go down to the bottom, we can look at the video quality. So video quality, uh, you can set it to, you know, quite a lot more customized options of transcoding and picture quality if you choose. Quality suggestions where the system will upgrade or downgrade uh, things from the remote server as needed. And finally, maximum uh, remote qualities can be set as well. So you can have different configuration options for a local access and a remote access too. And those configuration options go in quite a decent amount of detail there. And just the level of configuration and control there is pretty darn good, all the way down to some pretty fantastically detailed stuff here at the bottom. And once again, when we're playing these files, so if we go in and play the matrix again, go ahead and resume where we left off. When we go in, what we're able to do, sorry about the uh, slowdown there, that was my OBS not playing the game, is of course we can choose 
to go ahead and change that quality on the fly. Yes, we're gonna need a Plex Path to do it with hardware transcoding, but if you were never gonna use hardware transcoding anyway, then the point is moot. So ultimately when it comes to transcoding, yes, it's great that the Synology application gives you that option to run it natively without a Plex Pass, but the configuration, control, and overall customization, once again in Plex, is just A1. And so, in conclusion, it will not come as much of a tremendous surprise for many of you that DS Video, as a baseline application, is very good. It's very responsive, it does what it's supposed to do, and given that Synology have already separated photos, music, and video into individual applications in DSM, and as we see a continued rollout for Apple TV, um, Android TV, and the option to sideload a number of those Android applications onto your Fire TV, you can access all of your different kinds of media, but you will need to use different doorways in order to do so. Uh, playback of movies is very responsive. I like the initial splash screen of a lot of movies. I think the transitions are smooth, and I think the playback of what we're seeing here does exactly what it should. It just doesn't do it with a huge amount of customization and control, which a lot of users might not need, and it does it with a lot of the, con uh, the kind of options open to you being somewhat limited it's a great little application and certainly i can see why a lot of users prefer it to plex if simplicity is key to you but still nonetheless when it comes to comparing ds video and plex on your amazon fire tv plex just gives you a level of control a level of finesse and i would say a level of presentation that is just not available in that synology app and you may have seen there when I flicked on screen there to the live TV option. Yes, uh, DS Video has the option of some digital video tuners. And if you want to use it in Plex, yes, you need to use uh, a Plex Pass there. But it still comes across a lot better and smoother on the Plex Media Server account. And just that level of control, that level of customization is just something I think a lot of users, particularly those that are running you know, large numbers of connected users, whole families, this level of control in terms of bandwidth, in terms of playback, and, you know, connecting all of your multimedia together cannot be overstated. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. There's going to be another part to this video series where we're going to be looking at QNAP's alternative application. As mentioned earlier on, it is QMedia, an application that looks a little bit dated, but I've got to say gives you a lot more than you think it might. And then finally, of course, we're going to compare Synology and QNAP's app, so stay tuned for that. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you did. Other than that, have yourselves a fantastic week.